So when it comes to that debate that we had last night, folks, I mean, there's the frustration of the whole thing for me was sitting there and watching Donald Trump go on and say things that were untruthful and then not getting the pushback that he deserved. That was the first thing that kind of it got me. And then the second thing, of course, was I think Biden did a huge disservice to the way that uh, he's conducted his administration in terms of the successes that he's had. You know, the infrastructure bill, which literally is, is you could almost argue that it's touched just about every American or will in terms of projects, road bridges that are happening in their cities and in their, their counties, literally their backyards. And, you know, the success of what he is doing as a president is reflected in the stock market. That's a barometer of his success. And there's new highs in the stock market. Just pick an index, the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, just any one of them is basically screaming that what he's doing is working. And I think it was a, a disservice to the, the great things that he's accomplished um, in his performance in that, in that debate. So I think what he ought to do is just come out and say, hey, look, you know what? I made a mistake. I was off my game, you know, for whatever reason. He had a cold, you know, what have you. But um, just own it. Just come out and own it. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I think that the American people are okay with that, provided he gets back out and, you know, starts getting in front of the cameras and, and promoting himself and having Kamala Harris out there as well doing the same thing. I think that's going to help tremendously. But, you know, it's it just kind of made me think of the whole thing. And what, what triggered what I'm going to say here in a second is the part of the debate where Donald Trump said we had the best waters during my administration, the waters were pure. Well, not really. I mean, and when you look at what he did in terms of the EPA folks, it just made me think of this whole thing. It's, it's like, Oh my God, deja vu. You know, I, I've heard it. He only hires the best people. But when you look at some of the people that he's hired, like Scott Pruitt, who worked as the administrator of the EPA and then was replaced by Andrew Wheeler, my God, I mean, really, these are the best people. And I think we have to think long and hard about what a Trump administration really means. And I want to touch on several different things. I want to touch on what he did with picking people to run the EPA. And then some of the things that I think are waiting in the wings if he should get reelected. So Scott Pruitt, when you look at him, there's this article that's on dailybeast.com. This was written way back in 2017, and it's called The 10 Worst Things Scott Pruitt's EPA Has Already Done. And it says, in one year, Pruitt has destroyed the foundations of the agency, firing scientists and replacing them with industry lobbyists, undoing critical regulations that protect our air and water, and favoring industry interest over public health. Now, here's a guy that when he was in the EPA, he actually left after a year because he of all the scandals that erupted, Donald Trump fired him. And one of the things that he insisted on was that he had an $830,000 security detail to make sure that he was safe. And one of the other things that's not a huge thing, but it's sort of annoying was that when he lived in Washington, D.C., as he was in charge of the EPA, when he made a, a, a reservation at a French restaurant there in Washington, he would have the people in his SUV, the government SUV, turn on the lights and the sirens so that he could get there on time. You know, like, what, what kind of man is this, you know, that we're dealing with? And then there was the cone of silence. Remember that, the cone of silence? If you remember back to Get Smart back in the 70s, that was a serial show that was playing. I kind of enjoyed it. But um, they had the cone of silence that would drop down. You know, and it would... It would enable them to have conversations, you know, in silence. And Scott Pruitt found it necessary to have a cone of silence at the EPA in his office, right? I mean, deeply um, sort of paranoid individual, kind of obviously distrustful. But yeah, they spent $33,000 on that cone of silence. So he left in scandal, and then he was replaced by somebody named Andrew Wheeler, who was a lobbyist that from 2009 to 2017, the Wikipedia 
article on him says that Wheeler was a lobbyist in the law firm Fager ba Baker Daniels Energy and Natural Resources Practice. Since 2009, he represented the coal producer Murray Energy, privately owned by Robert E. Murray, a supporter of Donald Trump. And so what did he do when he first got into office? as the newly installed EPA administrator. Well, he rolled back the Obama-era coal ash rule. And by doing that, Wheeler provided regulatory relief to his old friend, the coal industry, by weakening environmental protections established in 2015 to clean up coal ash ponds, which are laced with toxic contaminants that leak into groundwater. The move was a top priority for coal baron Bob Murray, owner of Murray Energy, Wheeler's most lucrative client, when he worked at that law firm. So that's the first thing that he did. I mean, only the best people, right, Donald Trump? Only the best. And then he later famously rolled back the Clean Water Act protection. And this was the Obama EPA adopted uh, this broad science-based definition of the law that included protecting intermittent and what they called ephemeral streams and wetlands that do not have service water connections to other waterways. So it was small streams, marshes, that kind of thing. And the idea was that if you let these things get polluted, then you're going to pollute the groundwater. Truth. So they had a rule that that wouldn't happen. Well, Andrew Wheeler rolled that back. And when somebody asked him what wetlands would no longer be protected, he didn't even know. He said this, we have not done a detailed mapping of all the wetlands in this country. So here's a guy who didn't even know what the hell he was rolling back and what it would affect. I mean, again, only the best people, really? So, you know, when you're talking about Donald Trump, now I remember, I, I clearly recall life under Donald Trump, and I clearly recall the sigh of relief, the collective sigh of relief that Americans had when he was not voted in for a second term and when Biden came in for his, his first day, that collective sigh of relief that everybody had. And, you know, some of the things I fear, and I've talked a little bit about this on some of my podcasts that I fear that Donald Trump is going to do, I think there's going to be an attack on free speech. And I think that Donald Trump is going to use his Department of Justice basically to intimidate people and into, you know, not saying things that they should say about Donald Trump or feeling like maybe they shouldn't because they'll get sued or even launching investigations into the things like MSNBC and uh, CNN, for that matter, using the FCC and the Federal Trade Commission to do it. So again, maybe not getting in there and passing rules, you know, and regulations, but intimidating, using that intimidation, kind of like what they've done with abortion, you know, especially in Texas, where we've heard the stories that you can have an abortion if the woman's life is in danger, but the doctors are so afraid of getting sued that they don't do anything. So they knew this. And it's that, that same sort of master of intimidation that they're really good at that I think that Donald Trump is going to use in his second um, run if he's elected. And we obviously can't let that happen. The other thing is the tariffs. You know, if, if he's able to pass a 10% tariff on everything coming into this country, it's going to skyrocket inflation, and that extra cost will be passed on to everyday Americans. So definitely not, not something that's good and something that would definitely tank the economy as well as the stock market, for that matter. And then you've got the deportations, 3.5 million people being sent back the chaos that would ensue. We're talking about people that are building homes, maybe maybe homes that you plan on living in in a week or two. People out there picking strawberries and picking fruits and things like this that, that ultimately get to your kitchen table tomorrow. You know, people that are working in hotels that perhaps are going to be checking you in on the next vacation that you have and other different aspects that they are involved in in this economy. And the chaos that would ensue by sending all of these people back and the, uh, the lack of humanity of it, folks. And it's, it's, it's the chaos that I'm concerned about. It's the intimidation that I'm concerned about. And it's hiring all the best people that worries the hell out of me, folks. So when it comes to that, that performance, yeah, it was bad. But I'll tell you what, we don't need, we can't sustain another term, another four years of Donald Trump.